Assalamu alaikum dear viewers, peace be upon you all. Welcome to our show on Imam Hussain TV discussing the different facets of the Battle of Karbala on the day of Ashura. Today's episode we'll be looking at the very important topic of the companions of Imam Hussain. Imam's companions as we know were very few in number but the weight they carried as uh, moral figures and as seekers of justice and as figures of history it is huge. There are several aspects to this discussion and we'll be looking at this from different angles discussing the people that were present on the day of Karbala and the different traits they showed as loyal people to the Imam. Joining us in our discussion today, we have Sayyid Ali Nawab and Ibrahim Ansari to provide some poetry and add to the discussion. Sayyid, now we're going to start with um, maybe going backwards a bit before the Battle of Karbala. Um, the issue of Kufa. Now we know Muslim bin Akil, uh, Imam's cousin and messenger, uh, went to Kufa to give the message, to draw up a, a crowd to, revolu to do a revolution against Yazid. Um, and we know several people joined Muslim bin Akil at this time. And there's that moment where he's got thousands of followers and then by the end of prayer he's, he's lost many of his followers. Can you explain that situation and why was it that there were people that were so loyal to begin with and became disloyal in the end? بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم الحمد لله رب العالمين وصلى الله على محمد وآله الطاهرين First of all, I would like to pay my uh, sorrowful condolences for the arrival of the holy month of Muharram and as we are commemorating Imam Hussein عليه السلام and his family and his loyal companions inshallah this will be a good start for us to take lessons so we can implement in our lives when we speak about the companions of Imam Hussein alayhi salam, we speak about a group of individuals who gave everything they had for the sake of the banner of Islam. And specifically when we come to speak about Muslim Ibn Aqil and what happened in the city of Kufa, prior to the arrival of Muslim, thousands of letters were signed and sent to Imam Hussein alayhi salam whilst the Imam was in Medina requesting from the Imam to come to Kufa because the people of Kufa uh, represented a good variety of uh, the Shia, the followers of Ahlul Bayt Because the base of uh, the Khilafah of Amir al-Mu'mineen and uh, Ahlul Bayt lived for a good period in Kufa so there were many followers of Ahlul Bayt and very good companions of the Holy Prophet and Amir al-Mu'mineen lived in Kufa. Hence, many of the letters came from Kufa. So the Imam decided to send Muslim Ibn Aqil to get a gist of the reality because the reality could be much different than what um, it was actually apparent to the Imam. So Muslim Ibn Aqil arrived and they welcomed him. They did several gatherings to introduce Muslim Ibn Aqil to the heads and the people of Kufa, those who had assigned the letters and sent for the Imam to come. Uh, as you said, the sign and the agreement was that they all meet in the Masjid of Kufa to um, accompany Muslim and Muslim would start the, the procedure to march towards the Qasr al-Khilafah. Uh, you asked me why did the event of Kufa happen and why did so many people at the beginning uh, pay allegiance to Muslim, mm. eventually paying allegiance to Imam Hussein alayhi salam. Because looking from this, it's baffling sometimes. It is, yes. Um, at the beginning, uh, Ubaidullah ibn Ziyad had not uh, 
sent his spies around yeah. to uh, tell people the army of Sham is heading towards Kufa and sometimes they used um, violence and fear to scare people off, especially the women and the children. Um, because the men, they were, that's it, they, they gave their final uh, oath and their final word to Muslim al aqil and they said, we are with you whether it's life and death. So here, Ubaidullah ibn Ziyad being a, a very clever person, because he was uh, placed as a, a, a ruler on Basra, and he had held Basra very tightly, very strongly. So before he entered Kufa, he appeared to be as if it's Imam Hussein alayhi salam entering yes. Kufa. So people came because he had covered his face and people came around him and they started chanting, welcome, O son of the Holy Prophet, we are with you, welcome, you have glorified our city. Until they noticed that he stood by the gates of the Qasr al-Imara and he opened his mosque. It was then that they noticed that what whoever has been sent to them is not a normal person. Mm. So it was a tactic from that day onwards that uh, the army of, of Bani Umayyah, specifically headed by Ubaidillah ibn Ziyad, uh, started using a tactic to buy the souls of the men, gradually. Those who are known to be worldly people, they paid big amounts of gold to buy over. And that took days until Muslim entered Kufa. And some know they sent uh, their women, with the women that used to work as spies with Bani Umayyah in Kufa, mm. to go sit around gathering, sit down with women and children and scare them, scaremongering, telling them this is thousands of the, uh, strong, fierce men uh, are coming from Sham and uh, anyone to be known to be uh, paying allegiance to Imam Hussein alayhi salam or Hussein ibn Ali rather, Salatullah alayhi, they will uh, kill their men, they will take them as hostages, they will demolish their houses. So you can imagine the amount of things they were mm -hmm. saying in order for the women to actually believe that this is happening to an extent that they can go to the, to the men, to their husbands, to their fathers, to the sons and actually convince them that this is the reality and for the men to believe and actually leave. So this was one of the things that they used the tactic to actually um, implement the strategy to be able to f enter fear into the lives and the souls of the women and the children. And once the men see the women and the children are scared, before anything had happened, they would say, okay, now nothing's ha happened and our families are already scared. So yeah. what's going to happen if actually yeah. something does happen? Yeah. So, so there were several, fac several factors. There were several factors which meant that uh, people couldn't actually own up to go to Muslim and say, okay, I'm going to leave you. Mm. So they actually took the opportunity to come to the masjid and pray behind Muslim mm. as a sign of cowardness. And then gradually a man would take the hand of his brother or a father would take the hand of his son and gradually... Literally, be be literally behind his back literally uh, behind while, his he's, back. while he's praying. Um, Ibrahim, just um, bring us to the modern day. Yeah. We have this... Um, example of people who <coughs> apparently were loyal to the Imam but when it came push to shove as we say they walked away when it really mattered um, in the modern day um, you as a student as well how can we in the modern day take lessons from this the idea of it's very easy to give lip service to the Imam what are the moments where we have to almost show that loyalty um, in the modern day because we are living a thousand years later you see generally it's it as you said, speaking and saying something and even um, speaking of the shahada, of saying La ilaha illallah, Muhammadan Rasulullah, believing in um, the, that Ali and Waliullah and believing in the status of Ahlul Bayt is all said very easily. Yes. However, if there is no love attached to that, then it is nothing. An easy example we can take, for example, is Iblis alayhi la'anullah he said, La ilaha illallah. Yeah. He prayed to Allah. He believed in a day of judgment. However, there was no love connected to his aqeedah. Mm. And he allowed himself um, 
to think he allowed himself to think highly of himself, which is why when Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala ordered him to prostrate to Adam, mm. he said, You created him from mud and you created me from fire. So he saw that he had a higher status. So one thing is to stay humble. Another thing is um, uh, is to actually have build the connection of love. Allow your soul and your heart to make a connection yeah. um, towards a specific individual. But the ways we can do that are many, and Sayyid can can possibly enlighten us um, on all of these things. But for example, establishing our prayer constantly, it will build a connection. Um, constantly remembering. Uh, the Ahlul Bayt, remembering Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And another thing, a beautiful thing about the month of Muharram is every student, every student, every person that works, make time to attend majalis. The reason being is this, psychologically it's proven, the moment emotion is added to a belief, you build a connection mm. to it. The moment we attend the majlis and we drop one tear, for the love of Imam Hussein, we build that love and we build that connection. Yeah, absolutely. Faith plus action, as Definitely. we say. Um, we'll fast forward now to actually the night of Ashura and uh, a very important moment and I think a very beautiful moment. The moment where the camp of Imam Hussein are resigned to knowing that tomorrow is going to be the battle. Uh, they ask for that one more night in prayer uh, from the opposition army. And there's that moment where Imam speaks to his companions and uh, paraphrasing says to them that this is my this is my issue you guys can go home um, and it shows the nature of the Imam where he then switches off the light or uh, dims the candle so that no one's embarrassed um, so saying that can you tell us about when he turned the candle back on and the light back on did anybody leave um, and who were they why did they leave and what does it say about the people that actually stayed behind um, for the battle Again, this is a very good question, and many believe that um, when the Imam السلام, spoke to his companions on the night of Ashura, that was the first time that the Imam told them about the, oh, wow. uh, the honest opinion of those who are uh, standing on the other side of the field and what they intend to do. But rather the Imam from the first day, from the first moments that he came out in Medina, and all during the way to Mecca, from Mecca he gave many sermons. He continuously reminded people that where I am going, where I am heading, I will be killed. Mm. Imam alayhi salam in Medina told them, and he said that I am going, I am heading towards Shahada. Hence, speaking to his brother Muhammad ibn Hanafiya, when he questioned him, why are you going? You are going to be killed. These people are uh, intending to kill you. The Imam said, Allah yeah. wants to see me dead in this manner. Then uh, Muhammad ibn Hafi says, why are you taking the women then? So yeah. everyone around the Imam, surrounding the Imam, they saw this scenario. They knew that the Imam is going to be killed. So hence, many people decided there and then. Hmm. And there are many narrations that said that the Imam, السلام, when he moved out of Medina, Arriving at Mecca and going towards Karbala, uh, there was more than 600 individuals <coughs> within. <coughs> wow. But it was then, uh, every time Imam stopped in one of the stations during the route from Mecca to Karbala, uh, he used to sometimes receive sad news or bad news, and people then used to also depart mm. from the camp of the Like Imam. filtering out, yeah. Until Imam arriving the night of Ashura, uh, narrations say that some people did leave, mm. but many stayed. But also there are narrations to say that people joined the camp of Imam Hussein السلام, on the 9th of Muharram, the afternoon of the 9th of Muharram from the camp of Umar ibn Sa'ad. Oh, in the afternoon? In the afternoon okay. of the 9th. Mm. Uh, narrations say that a number between 25 and 35 individual soldiers from the camp of Umar ibn Sa'ad joined Imam Hussein السلام, repenting. And there are narrations to say, other than those 25 to 35, on the night of Ashura, in the darkness of the night, there were uh, army individuals who left the camp of Umar ibn Sa'ad and joined Imam Hussein Yes. But that is to take the different narrations into concept, where some say the companions were 72, some narrations say they were 100, and some say they were 160. 
give and take, there were individuals who did actually leave, but uh, I would come and say that those who made it until the night of Ashura, yeah. those were the loyal companions. Yes. And there was only a few individuals who left for what, realizing that that's it, that's the last point, and if I don't leave now, because as Brother Ibrahim said, if there is no love connected to your movement, yes. then there is, yes. you would leave easily, you would Very drift away easily. Yeah. So those who had le uh, were um, remained on the night of Ashura, those who really had the love of <coughs> Imam Hussein and they really knew yes. and Imam Hussein alayhi salam on the day of Ashura, he showed them their positions because he knew that there is no one else is going to leave. Yes. And these are going to stay and remain with him. Mm. So then he showed them, now that you've remained loyal to me, and you have the love that it needs, then I will show you your positions in the heavens. Whereas if he showed them before, it wouldn't have been a true, they would have gone just for that. Yeah. Absolutely, it's beautiful. Um, as per the format of the show, in the true spirit of the culture of mourning, the tragedy of, of Karbala, yeah. we're going to have uh, some poetry uh, recited by Brother Ibrahim. Um, and the poetry recited is going to be uh, on the topic of the show as well, um, as much as possible. So please, Brother Ibrahim. Um, recite your poetry for us. So as Imam Hussein alayhi salam said, I have never known companions like you. A, a poem written by my cousin Basim Lansari. I have never known companions like you, Hussein said proudly, giving them their due. They have stemmed from every corner and race. Together they gathered in Karbala, their place to help Hussein, they rushed eagerly in pace, leaving behind family, wealth, and life's glue. Habib was their elder and role model for all. He was a sign of love and standing tall. Forty-one companions who were hard to appall, young and old together, they made the best crew. In bravery and loyalty, learn from John. Like everyone, he was allowed to be gone, but they, provide, but they proved they outmatched their peers in brawn. The magic of Hussein made their souls renew. One by one, they faced the enemy steadily, seeking permission from Hussein readily. Like fragrant flowers, they fell. Headily, the Ansar during Ashura had the best view. The Ansar during Ashura had the best view. We wish we were with you. SubhanAllah, beautiful poetry. <laughs> to continue the discussion, um, and we'll go with the narration that Ibrahim started with, where Imam says, there's no companions like you. Now, this is a very, when you think about it, a very heavy statement to make, because Imam's possibly, and maybe you can shed light, is he comparing himself to every holy person that God sent, that out of, going Moses, Jesus, even his grandfather, is Imam saying that his companions are better than the companions of all these other prophets, or is he just talking about his own context at this time? I said, uh, the Imam alayhi salam, when he says, لا أعلم أصحابا خير وأوفى من أصحابي, the Imam's knowledge is the knowledge of Rasulullah sallallahu yes. And when he says, لا أعلم, it doesn't mean that for this time and space, I don't know, or I have not come to recognize. The Imam's knowledge covers from the beginning of time until the end, end of time. So when he comes to say, La A'lam, <coughs> it means from the beginning when Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala created Prophet Adam until the last soul remaining on the face of this earth, which is the soul of Imam al Mahdi, ta'ala, Farajah al Sharif, before Raja. Imam is saying, I do not know, or I do not recognize any other more lawful companions than my companions. Mm. Now you can translate or interpret the saying of the Imam however you, you may like. And there are uh, certainly viewers watching us that are not of the followers of Ahlul Bayt When they hear the statement, they would come and question that you Shia, you give a position to Ahlul Bayt specifically. Imam Hussein more than the rest of the prophets. And I will come and confirm that. <laughs> we the Shia, the believers of Ahlul Bayt salam, our belief is that the Imams of Ahlul Bayt, they are in status and in position greater than the rest of the prophets apart from Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa 
So here, the Holy Prophets and the Messengers from beginning of time until the Holy Messenger of Islam, they came, they had companions, they had very noble companions that stood with them, fought with them, sacrificed their lives for the sake of those messages. The companions of Rasulullah, the companions of Amir al-Mu'mineen, Hawariyeen, they were known to be very close companions where Amir al-Mu'mineen used to share secrets yes. of Imamat with them because he knew that these people would be able to understand and comprehend. Their hearts could take it. Their hearts could take. The containers are lawful mm -hmm. individuals. But then Imam Hussein alayhi salam came and gave that very strong statement. I have never known companions better than my companions. Now come and sit down and analyze yes. the statement. What it, it entails. So Amir al-Mu'mineen alayhi salam had individuals like Hajar ibn Adi, Maytham al-Tamar, Khumail ibn Ziyad. Who used to go out in the desert with them. used to own. go out individually, sit down with them and for hours and hours speak to them with things that Amir al-Mu'mineen did not share with any other mm. companion. But Imam Hussein alayhi salam had companions that in, at the time of Imam Hussein showed loyalty and strength to the events of Karbala, maybe I would say, maybe, if there were other individuals of other companions of prophets and messengers, they wouldn't have been able to yes. understand and stand steadfast yeah. with the leader. Yeah. Absolutely. Um, as we get towards the end of the show, uh, Ibrahim, we can list all the companions that we can, that we want, and if we put the, maybe the family uh, of Imam aside, um, and I think everyone can answer this question in a way, and I think all of our viewers can too who know the story. Um, we all, and at different phases of our life, have a connection with certain companions of of, of the Imam. Um, in in your life, it could be currently, or it could be the same as before. Which companion to you do you resonate with the most um, on on the day of Ashura? Out of the companions of Imam Hussein alayhi um, salam, it's very hard um, to actually separate them. Uh, it's very, it's, it's yes. honestly very hard because each one of them took a, a specific stance. So for example, when you come to John and Imam Hussein set him free, he said to him, I am free when I am with you and through the shahada I will become free. Yeah. So you see, th this is not an easy statement to make. Um, You've got the example of Borer on the ground of Karbala and he's looking at Habib and he says to him, Usika bihada and looking at Imam Hussein. That take care of Imam Hussein while he's while while he's about to, 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 yeah. to pass away. However, I feel like one companion that was made to stand out even by Imam Sajjad through the way that he buried the, the bodies. When we go to Karbala, we realize that Habib ibn Mudahir mm. was given his separate grave mm. because of the great status that Habib held. Um, Habib, he comes, and Imam Hussein comes to him and he sees him crying. And then Imam Hussein would say to him, did you remember your family? Because we need to understand Habib's status was he was the leader of a tribe of Bani Asad, a massive tribe. Imam Hussein said to him, did you remember your family? Did you remember your status? Why is it that you cry? Do you want to go back? You can go back. He said to him, no. Mm. That woman sit, standing by that tent is what is making me mm. cry. Shouting that is there no supporter for us. And this stance that they took, honestly, because each one of them took a very similar stance, I, I literally cannot choose between them. Mm. But the fact that Habib was given by the Imam a separate grave speaks for itself speaks for yeah, itself absolutely uh, saying that to, to as, as a final point um, and very quickly there was uh, we know that the Imam's companions were from several different backgrounds even religious backgrounds let alone ethnicities um, can you explain the not not where they came from as such because we know you know they were Arabs they were from Persia they were from everywhere um, across the Arabian, Arabian Peninsula but what's the message of this because the verse that just came to my mind right now is in Surah Hujarat where Allah says to us that He created you from different nations and tribes to get to know one another. Um, as a, Islam as a religion, how does this one moment where Imams got so many different variety of ages and nationalities in his camp, what does it tell us about the spirit of Islam uh, in a social sense? 
accept them. This uh, one answer we can give to this question is to say to those who claim that this argument, as they put it, or this dispute uh, was between two families or mm. two tribes, between Bani Umayyah and between Bani okay. Hashim. And this in Karbala shows that this is not something between two families and they argued over power or they fought over power and, and position and throne. It's something much bigger because if it was, then many different um, happenings and occurrences did occur from the time of the Holy Prophet until the time of Imam Hussein where two tribes or two clans, they fought each other over power. Mm. But we don't see uh, the Holy Prophet or Amir al muminin or Imam Hassan or Imam Hussein getting involved. But when it comes and the banner of Islam is in danger and the, the fact that Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa alayhi wa sallam, the grandfather of Imam Hussein, when he came out and said, oh people of the world, my message is for you all, that the message of Islam is for the whole of the nation. For the whole of the universe, for the whole of the inhabitants of this world. Ya Yuhannas inni Rasulullah ilaykum jami'an. Rasulullah did not say, O oh Muslims, I am here to propagate, or all oh, the inhabitants of Pen the Arabian Peninsula, I am here to guide you from darkness to, to the light. No. Uh, Rasulullah, his message was to the whole world. So Imam Hussein alayhi salam and the variety of his companions coming from different parts of the world or different parts of the Islamic world shows that. This is an Islamic issue. This is the issue between righteous and falsehood. Falsehood. So it doesn't have anything to do with Bani Umayyah and Bani mm. Hashim fighting over something. No, this is a message that Imam Hussein through this one just to show mm. that I have someone who is a Christian and I have someone who is a Turk and I have someone who is from Africa. They all, for the sake of the banner of Islam, are coming here to sacrifice. Mm. And you have individuals who claim that they are from Arabia, Bani Umayyah, and they are the core of the Arabs, mm. and Islam was started in their land, and they themselves are fighting the message mm. of Islam. Irony. Irony. The people are from who are from the farthest points of, of Arabia have come mm. to sacrifice their lives for the sake of the message that Bani Umayyah should be the ones mm. who are <coughs> defending it. But mm. Unfortunately, Absolutely. it didn't happen. Great. Be a very beautiful point to end with. Um, we would like to thank our viewers for watching uh, this episode. Um, an absolutely fascinating topic uh, on the companions and something we can discuss forever and ever and ever. There are several personalities to look at. Um, one thing that comes to my mind is that uh, a very famous poet was asked about who his favourite companion is, as I asked as well. And he said they are all Hussein because each one of them showed what Imam Hussein was. Um, as per the format of the show, we're going to end with, in the spirit of uh, mourning the Imam, uh, a eulogy by Brother Ibrahim to close us. So please, Brother Ibrahim. A poem written by uh, Brother Nouri Sardar. Um, of course, we cannot be companions of Imam Hussein, but, we'll be, well, but we can become servants of Imam Hussein. Inshallah. Oh my Lord, put me with the servants of Hussein. Oh my Lord, put me with the servants of Hussein. Oh, the one who holds my soul in his hand, answer me this prayer. Let me return to serve my beloved Hussein year after year. Since birth I was raised in his name and taught this by my mother, taught that the service of Hussein is service like no other. O oh my Lord, who raised me in the love of Hussein, O oh my Lord, put me with the servants of Hussein. O oh my Lord, I beg you by all the tears that flow down my cheeks, seal my mouth, don't let me speak unless for 
Abu Hussein I speak Let me serve his banner, his name and the dust under his feet The only when I'm serving Hussein Bring me my death to meet Oh my Lord, take my life when I'm serving Hussein Oh my Lord, put me with the servants of Hussein Hearts do not know what love is until they fall in love with him Hearts yearn for him like a father is yearned for by an orphan Crying for him washes away all the past, the lies and sin And Hussein's loves ask me what can I be not, what have I been Oh my Lord, put me with the lovers of Hussein Oh my Lord, put me with the servants of Hussein If you ever find my eyes dry then for Hussein make them wet If you ever find my eyes dry then for Hussein make them wet And let my hands witness to you that for him I strike my chest Let me mourn him day Day and night, both in this life and in the next When I wail for him, it's as if with Hussein I have met Oh my Lord, let my tears flow only for Hussein Oh my Lord, put me with the servants of Hussein Allahumma salli ala Muhammad wa ala Muhammad wa ala Muhammad Oh, <laughs>